we often talk about the toxic dynamics that you see on social media and you see as people's profile grow, as pundits, wannabe influencers, you know, this kind of thing. We've noted it. We did an episode on trigonometry, whether they were reflecting on their mm-hmm. growth, right? Mm-hmm. And it it is at the heart of a lot of the way that the gurus interact. They're always trying to, you know, the kids would say they're trying to gain clout, right? Or mm-hmm. get controversy and this kind of thing. They're very thirsty for it. Mm, incredibly. The gurus want attention and they can always find ways to get it. And there's a channel on YouTube by a guy who has like the usual tale of woe about, you know, the mainstream media field. In his case, he believes he was held back because of the woke DEI agenda. And he's a white male, right? So he wasn't part of the BBC's image, right? So he had all these good documentary ideas and like ability, a good presenter and all this, but he mm. he didn't fit you know, the demographic characteristics. He's got a grievance narrative, you might say. You might say that, yes. And his name is Andrew Gold. He's also done some work on like Scientology and cults and that kind of thing. But he created a channel called Heretics. That Mm -hmm. was his (laughs) rebranded. Of course, it's called Heretics. There's only like six or so names for these things. Dissidents. I know. (laughs) Renegades. Renegades. (laughs) <laughs> so heretics it is and his channel is growing like you know he he's going up but he very much is following in the mold of trigonometry i think he references chris williamson right as also somebody who wants to imitate and he recently did an interview with a british soccer player and she is very much kind of social justice warrior type, right? Woke advocate, DI advocate type person. So he did an interview with her and she doesn't come across very well. You know, she doesn't respond very well. He raises contradictory points in her perspective of things. She calls him racist at times or says, you know, this is a racist perspective. So it's a kind of woke, anti-woke stuff that the culture war eats up. Right. Mm-hmm. And as a result, it was quite popular on on YouTube and, you know, the, the kind of anti-woke networks. Right. But then I saw that he posted another video afterward called Exposed. I didn't show this in viral woke debate with any aluko. Yeah. So this is a follow up video that he did afterwards. And the first thing he highlights, Matt, so just I'm going to comment on the dynamics because this video seemed to me to encapsulate all of the kind of toxic elements that we talk about in a very short period. So first of all, you get this. The trailer alone has more than 2 million views on Twitter and opened this channel up to a whole new audience. And his nemesis, Joey Barton, couldn't resist a pop. The focus on views, right? We hear this with Peterson. We hear it with... Constantine, mm-hmm. yeah, all of them, the constant referencing, this got X amount of views, and that indicates something profound, rather than that indicates that you're producing, you know, inflammatory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is him like playing clips right from it and then adding commentary. So I thought it would be a good idea to have a deep dive into the most controversial and confusing moments. I like Eni Aluko and I think she means well, but she is part of a woke cult that has infested and taken over the mainstream press. Do not blame her, but blame her bosses, her peers, the people instilling authoritarian DEI and diversity quotas into our media without our permission. I want to specifically look at Eni's arguments and the paradoxical hypocrisies in which they are dripping. Some of these are extremely obvious. You can watch the whole thing on Heretics, of course. He says he likes any Aluko, but I doubt she would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on here? He's had a video. It's a culture war, woke, anti-woke thing. It went somewhat viral. He's gotten very excited. Yeah. He's doing a follow-up and it's exposed. You know, you have to watch this to find out you know, what really happened, the thing. He's aiming for maximum clickbait. 
he wants to min-max this. Am I right? Yeah, exactly that. So listen to this, Matt. This is like this is almost all of the YouTube tropes in, you know, condensed one minute format. If you care about this kind of content, please just hit subscribe. It makes all the difference. And I'm fascinated to see how many people do subscribe just from watching this video. But more importantly, more subscribers means I can get bigger and bolder guests and grow this channel into the stratosphere. Now, the first thing to note is that although socials from the video have gone viral, it's been covered by no one in the mainstream media. And yet, YouTubers have been covering it and racking up millions of views. This video struck a chord. There are things, of course, that go on off screen too. And if you stay till the end of the video, I can give you an insight into how things were off screen, off camera, and I'll be brutally honest. <laughs> <laughs> so did you detect anything there, Matt? <laughs> it's so good. He, he hits every one of the really thirsty influencer techniques because, first of all, if you care, if you care about our mission to expose what's going on, to, 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 to defend the society, to make things back the way they should be, then you will click like Hit and subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So nice, nice call to action there. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and obviously there was a ding on the mainstream media because the mainstream media won't cover this, Chris. It's not yeah, picking it went this up. Viral. A YouTube video went viral about like an anti-woke thing, but the mainstream, it wasn't on any <laughs> of the news channels. Right? What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about this? We need to make my video go more viral and stay to the end. <laughs> to the moon to the moon i know i mean this is you know guys most people remember the the constant and kissing thing where it's just the the similar kind of obsession where they're very transparent like they're not hiding really what's going on in their heads and you just know that it's going on 24 7 how can i get more likes how can i get more subscriptions how can i get revenue up how can i get more clout how can i get more attention like that is the one and only overriding concern that they have it's not like they don't have some political agenda. They don't try to fight wokeness or do anything really, I think. They're all about themselves, Chris. I think that's true, though I do think that like something like trigonometry, for example, they do have a political line, right? Like, of course and, they do. And, but if, but if he could if he could get more clicks and more likes and more revenue from having a completely different political line. Then he would do it. Absolutely. These, it's just pure naked ambition, surely. Maybe. But stay to the end. You've got to stay to the end because that's where the real secrets are going to be uncovered. And I think, I mean, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I think the way YouTube, the algorithm works, or at least how they believe it works, is that if somebody watches your video for a bit, that's good. If they click on it that they like, that's good. But if you watch it to the end, then that's extra super good right because it, 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 it tells the algorithm. algorithm yeah yeah youtube it gives you feedback on videos how long the average mm. person watched to and i don't know what it you know does but like i think the general law is yeah. people staying till the end of the video leads to it being higher mm. ranked in the algorithm and whatever so and and that promise matt that there will be some you know behind the scenes information divulged right if mm. you stay to the end like yeah. i'll be brutally honest brutally, uh, about brutally honest. what it is so we might, we might even see what that uh, information is at the end. So to show like the kind of thing that he did in the video, this is a like clip of him commenting on the content. So you'll hear a bit of the like back and forth and then his editorializing on it. You're right that it was sports, not just football. You're right. Yeah, that it was, was, sport, it was yeah, a thing about pretty sports. sure. Um, in the boardroom in sports, it's 17% are uh, BAME in, 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 uh, as opposed to 18% of the general population. So... That's that surprised me. That, to me, that seems pretty pretty fair as well. Yeah, I mean, I think with sport as well, you've got to you got to talk about sort of cultural norms and cultural background, right? So, typically, you know, sports like tennis. As you'll go on to see, this is one of the many times when any is unable to answer the question and goes off on a tangent about tennis. Again, this isn't her fault. This is a cult-like ideology and she isn't used to facing a reasonable person outside of the cult. She has nowhere else to turn or to go. But let's look at the kind of cultish indoctrination they feed her. This is from the podcast she was on where they discuss the lack of diversity in boardrooms. 
Come on, it's not her fault. She's a brilliant dead zombie. That has just- <laughs> She's been indoctrinated, yeah. I mean, like you said at the beginning, she didn't, well, you said she didn't perform particularly well. I could easily believe that. But he also, he's doing her really dirty, isn't he? I mean, he sounds quite polite oh, yeah. and friendly in the interview. And then this editorializing in the the follow-up yeah that's not she nice. look at her dodge the question as she and it isn't her fault she hasn't been taught how to think or interact with <laughs> reasonable people. she's never dealt with a reasonable person before <laughs> it's, it's so it said it's like it is like ella partridge you know uh, it i think in this exchange for example i think that Andrew Gold's point about like the relative numbers and boardrooms or whatever, he might be more correct. I think he is, right? Mm-hmm. But it doesn't it doesn't matter because the argument isn't like, oh, she she has better facts and she is doing better. That's not the point that we're making. The point is that this super heavy editorializing and presenting someone else as like a somebody who's just had a brain filled up with ideological nonsense, doesn't know how to interact with reasonable people like that is a heavy dose of rhetoric uh, on top of it even if that were the case you don't usually need to say it right like you you know you can allow people to listen and draw their own conclusions so yeah it's it's not a very kind thing to do to someone Mm -hmm. you interviewed it would be like us taking the sam harris interview and taking out individual clips of it and then pointing yeah. out things that he did in it that we didn't like, which you could do, but seems a bit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit it's a bit below the belt. I mean, I'm still stuck on just the, the transparent motivations beto- behind people like Goldman here or um, Constantine Kisson. Um, like, this is really what we're talking about, I think, when we're talking about grifting. Like, it's, it's not... It, it can be about money. It can be about making money in unethical ways, like endorsing products that are sort of inconsistent with what you're purportedly on about in your material. But I, for me, a lot of it is about this, like this, this rampant ambition, like this thirsty, hungry drive to do anything at all, say anything, any kind of like make whatever content that is going to make you go more like viral. Like move up a leg, yeah, another move up. thousand subscribers. Yeah, now, now of course everyone would like to be popular. Everyone would like to be read by more people or listened to by more people. But there are ways to do it that are ethical by just trying to do something good. And there are ways to just game the system, game the algorithm, you know, prey on people's weaknesses and things like that. And when it's obvious that someone is doing that just out of out of naked ambition, then for me, that's that's what makes them grifters. I actually think that Chris Williamson, for example, wouldn't do this with I guess, like, you mm. know, he has the same desire to grow his channel and and all that kind of thing. But I don't believe that he would do this kind of breakdown, even with a guest that, you know, he disagreed with. So I think there... That sounds right to me. That's what I'm saying. There are degrees. Like, it's not a black and white thing. Yeah, even maybe trigonometry might not do this because, like, they (laughs) had David Pakman on and then they only responded whenever Pakman released, like, kind of edited videos saying, you know... So I'm not saying they are bastions of responsibility, (laughs) but I'm just saying... This is like quite you below can, the belt. You can, <laughs> yeah. you can always you can always think lower. <laughs> this is what you can, this is what yeah, I'm and yeah. just to illustrate again, the like it does feel like full sympathy because he's he's doing the interviewee dirty, but then editorializing that it's actually sympathy for her to you know that's making him do this. So l- listen to this. But so if this is meritocracy and it's nothing to do with quotas and and trying to push people up, is the assumption then that black people are just two point five times better at acting, news reading, and those kinds of things. Maybe. Really? I mean, so because for years, why not? But for years when it was that with white people, there were more white people per per person of the population, saying something like that would be considered racist. White saying people, something like what? White people are just better at TV presenting and, re- and uh, news presenting and stuff. Well, when, 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 I mean, white, the white, um, White people, I think, have been dominant for hundreds of years, right? Sure. So that has been the assumption. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. The woke hypocrisy in a nutshell. 
Again, I implore you to remember any means well. She has been fed this dogma for years by her peers and bosses in the mainstream media. I used to do a lot of videos about cults, and my friend Aaron Smith-Levin, who left Scientology, once told me that when he was in the cult, nothing, nothing that you could say would ever convince him that anything from Scientology was wrong or contradictory or just didn't seem to make sense. They don't see the contradictions. <laughs> He's doing it. He's being mean. That's harsh. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming she is contradictory. Yeah, she, she is being is, contradictory. I, mean, like... I, I, I inferred that from the thing. I'm sure. I, I, he sounds like he's correct. But that framing. I mean, we, we didn't do that with Sam Harris. Did we? Didn't release a, a breakdown or Jimmy Wheel, or, or, Jimmy Wheel yeah. or Destiny, and we won't do that. And it's not out of delicacy or fear of offending them. It's just not cool. If if you think that they're, <laughs> if you think they're deluded and they're being inconsistent, then say so at yeah. the time. Yeah. If you uh, want to call them a cult member, like yeah. then say it to the fear. Say you know I think you're a woke cult member who's never dealt with a reasonable person <laughs> yes. before. Like say that to them. I know we we are commenting right on a particular video and thing, but this is illustrative of these rather toxic dynamics that can overtake in this area where this video in itself is like trying to piggyback on a like yeah. anti-woke woke debate thing. And then this video is digging into it more. And like, mm. if you look at Andrew Gold's channel, it is what you would expect. Like, you know, all the trigonometry style Cultural. thumbnails from yeah. all the usual commentators. And I guess these activists or political spin doctors or whatever, I don't know. I, I guess it's in their interest to find people to talk to who are pretty bad. You know, like Jordan Peterson could talk with someone that is, you know, on the left side of politics, is rather woke, but is very calm and reasonable and logical and so on. But he's not, that's not going to be good content. He'd be far better off talking to someone who is pretty terrible and that is going to yield material like this, which you can serve up to your audience. So... I guess I'm seeing the incentives here, right? Which is like both both sides of this equation have an interest in engaging with each other, and and having some of the <laughs> some, producing some of the worst content the internet has to offer because it's it's outrage fuel for both sides, right? Yeah, and I I just looked my at the thumbnails on the Heretics channel. I'll just read the titles that you see in the thumbnails. Doctors lied to them. Christina Buttons. This one fact disproves trans. Colin Wright. Woke people are mutants. Edward Dutton. <laughs> woke, woke celebs exposes herself. That's the one we just did. The woke did this on purpose? <laughs> We're not allowed to say this. Mia Hughes. Shock cause of trans epidemic. And so on and so forth. Right? Oh, like, God. that's leading into the clickbait culture war framing of things. And it's, uh, it is not centristy content right like it's a, a it's it's leaning into the anti-woke heretic renegade dissident dialogue mm. uh free press style thing and just to finish matt the last clip from from this here's what you get you know you were promised the insight about what's going to come at the end of the video Here's the, the little thing that came at the end. Here's the thing you don't see in the video or the many viral videos that have spun off from this video. When we finished, despite any being close to tears at points during the interview, she told me that she thought the interview, which has been labelled around the world as a, an absolute car crash, she thought it went pretty well. I felt bad because I thought, you know, unless I was mistaken about how this had just gone, that she was about to get it big time, which did then happen on social media. And I kept trying to remind people, remember the person, remember the human. She doesn't mean this stuff. It's just a, an ideology that she's become wrapped up in. And it obviously she's, in, she's incentivized to continue believing it because that's how she's able to keep her profession, her job. I walked any to the station and we have remained friendly since. But here's the problem. No matter how viral my video went, it seems to have changed very little in the mainstream world, although it has hopefully changed some minds, at least in alternative spaces on YouTube and in Twitter. But in these 
mainstream areas, the mainstream woke actors and presenters will continue for now in their bubbles, talking cultish nonsense to one another and presuming that anyone who challenges them with facts and logic is racist. In cult terms, this is the non-believer, the outsider, the bad guys, and it makes the cult member feel safe in their misguided and illogical conclusions. I must be right. If anyone disagrees with me, they're the bad guys on the outside. Let's not think too deeply about the various paradoxes and illogical conclusions that I came to during that. Yeah, that was the that was the exciting revelation at the end. Yeah, that she thought it went well. She thought it went well, and they were quite friendly. And he's very reasonable, isn't he? He doesn't he doesn't want to demonize her. He's, no, he's very he was sympathetic. Reminding people. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not like he stuck an inflammatory thumbnail. On the yeah, video, it is, it is not <laughs> like he twisted the knife in this follow-up video. No, no they're no. friends. They're friends. Yeah. It's not her fault. Was that the you know brutally honest revelation that was promised at the start? You know, you can judge, but also that point, Matt, about you know very little has changed in the mainstream world, despite a yeah. viral. Despite my, my video went viral and the world didn't change. <laughs> like this, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I I remember I remember Constantine Kisson had a similar degree of hubris after his his Oh yeah, piece. in his case he made but in his case, because it went more viral than this, he was like, it's actually, you know, it's had a big impact. You know, I doors have been opened and the Oxford speech, which as we covered, was just almost entirely rhetoric and culture war red meat again but for constantine he presented it as like a crowning achievement of his you yeah. know public career yeah. so he can, yeah. he, can look, he can look his wife straight in the eye now that's what he <laughs> said <laughs> that's what he yeah, said that's, that's not me making a joke that's what, that he, is said. what he said <laughs> yep, yep. yeah yeah no i mean so. it does it yeah oh god chris the whole ecosystem i mean it's basically you have the algorithm and then you have you have all of this people attaching themselves to it tried to it's a it's a great big awful attention hamster wheel and let me also leave my one revelation to the end here i have talked to andrew gold before he suggested you know that we do some video together because he was covering cult things and never got around to it for just whatever reason scheduling and whatnot but when we commented once before about the distant dialogues and i think i mentioned him being one of the figures like climbing up the ladder he reached out to me and and dm'd about you know just about that comment and whatnot right and i i will say this that i have no problem to explain directly any of this <laughs> like i'll i would say all the same things here maybe you know i i, I perhaps you phrase it slightly more kindly directly, but this is my opinion of that kind of content. I don't like all these things about, you know, people assuming that you should go to people behind the scenes. or No, like if you put out public content like this kind of thing, perfectly legitimate to comment on it and the dynamics that we're discussing here are really transparent, <laughs> really, really incredibly obvious. So, I, yeah, I'm just saying I will happily explain this directly to Andrew as well, should he, you know, want to argue that he wasn't doing any of that. I'm sure you would, Chris. Yeah, it's a strange, it's a strange world. Is that- but- 